two common ways to encode categorical features, one hot encoder for unordered, also known as nominal data, and ordinal encoder for ordered or ordinal data. And we'll come back to this statement in a bit. But here's our example. So we've got this data frame. Shape is an unordered feature, meaning there's no logical ordering to um, the categories. Because of that, we're going to use one hot encoder. And here we have one hot encoder. Um, we pass it shape, and it generates three columns because there are three possible categories of shape. One hot encoding is the same as dummy encoding. Um, this left to right order is alphabetical, thus, this represents circle, this re represents oval, and this represents square. Now, you could use get dummies in pandas to do this, but one hot encoder integrates much better into the scikit-learn workflow, meaning pipeline, meaning cross validation, meaning grid search. So, um, one hot encoder is definitely the way to go uh, rather than get dummies. Okay, so that is our unordered data. Our ordered categories are class and size. So, by ordered, I'd mean there is a logical ordering within each feature that may have a relationship with the target. And I'll give an example in a bit. But um, with class, we see first, second, third. And what we do is we define the ordering of the categories when we create our ordinal encoder instance. So first, before second, before third. And then for this size feature, we say small, medium, large, and extra large. Then when we use um, ordinal encoder, it encodes each feature as a single feature. So you can see that first gets encoded as zero, second gets encoded as one, and third gets encoded as two, and then same here, small, medium, large, extra large becomes zero, one, two, and three. Now we included M for medium in this data, even though it doesn't appear as a size, because we know it will occur in the data. So it makes sense to include it. Now, when we have ordered data like these, this, this ordinal encoder is the optimal scenario because the model can learn that relationship between it increasing or decreasing and the target, okay? So let me give you an example. Um, that might help. So let's pretend we're predicting airplane ticket price and class is one of the features, okay? The, we want the model to be able to learn that increasing the class value decreases the price. In other words, first class tickets are the most expensive, second class tickets are the second most expensive, and third class tickets are the third most expensive. By using ordinal encoder, we can encode that as a single feature, and the model can learn, okay, as the class number goes up, the price goes down. So it learns that inverse relationship. If you were to use a one-hot encoder for class, meaning dummy encoding, it could still learn that relationship in a way, but it would only learn the relationship between first class and not first class. So if you dummy encoded this, it would be three columns, and it could learn, okay, when you have uh, first class and not first class, here's the impact on the price, but it's even, it will result in a better model if you encode it as a single feature using ordinal encoder. Okay, let's go back to label encoder. And I said label encoder is for labels, not features. So label encoder is designed for class labels, okay? it works very similar to ordinal encoder. So label encoder and ordinal encoder work similarly, except with label encoder, you can't define the ordering and you can only encode one thing at a time. Whereas with ordinal encoder, you can encode multiple features at a time. Thus, label encoder is not useful for features and scikit-learn docs recommend against using it for features. They explicitly recommend against it. So ordinal encoder is for features. Label encoder is for labels. Um, and in fact, just as a side note, all scikit-learn classification models that I'm aware of can accept string values as the labels 
So you don't actually need label encoder usually. So um, the use cases for label encoder these days are quite limited.